casual now. Knee deep in the passenger seat, and you're eating me ass. I love that part. I love it. I know what you tell your friend. She's always talking about like Long Beach. She loves I like Long a Beach. female singer's obsession with Long Beach because Lana does the same thing. She's talked about Long Beach quite a bit. I think Chapel just really is like a storyteller and, and places you in setting really well. And I, I like to, to be grounded in a setting. She paints a picture. She's like, this is LA, Southern California. It's where I've come into my sexual awakening. I love my would-be girlfriend's mom, and sometimes I have to talk to her like loony sister on the phone, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening to her sister? Oh, I didn't catch any sister goes, part. On the phone talking down your sister. Well, maybe the sister's trying to... Off herself? You never know. Mm. We're here in the stew. We got the dogs. Yes. Tony's situated. I brought a bed so he can suck suck on his bed and soothe himself. He's and staying. this I really realized that having a meeting with Tony in the mornings, like and telling him how the day is gonna go and what my expectations are oh. and what my needs are really does change his behavior over the course of the day. Interesting. Like you I fully have like a oh we have a we yeah have a talk we have a talk, and I wake him up and you go go hi there and then we talk and I'm like I want you to come to the studio with me but it's a long drive it is forty minutes in the car and you really have to behave you have to be in your bed and you can't bark because it drives me crazy when you bark in the car and like I need you to be a good boy in the studio right. and you can't cause. And I really did coach him today. And look, he did not bark once in the car. Mm. And I coached him on Monday, too. And he was great on Monday in the car. But I didn't include the studio briefing in our morning meeting. So then I included that today. They understand. And it's working. They, list, they know. Don't How many words do dogs? Isn't it like up to like. They know a lot. 20 words or something. I also briefed him. My hypothesis is proving true because I briefed him before I went out of town and told him that like Sierra was going to pick him up and take him to city Aww. dogs. And like then I he'd spend two days there and then I'd be back to get him. And she was like, he was so well behaved. He was excited to go. He wasn't giving attitude. So I highly recommend if you have a dog that's acting up, consider the powerful effects of a morning meeting. I don't do morning meetings, but I do like I always like if I'm going out of town, I tell Mango like we're gonna be back. And like mm -hmm. I say, like daddies are coming back, and he, I think he gets it. But I would say take it a step further. Just I would say we're leaving today at this time. We're gonna go here. You're gonna go there. You're well, gonna have a listen. lot of fun. He goes when I'm talking to him. He'll go. Mm hmm. So I'll try that. I'm telling you, the morning meeting has worked wonders. <laughs> They're at, we're excelling right now. We're firing on all cylinders. You're in a slack together. We basically are. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. G chatting. Yeah. <laughs> if he had opposable thumbs and access to a keyboard, I would do it. But I like an IRL. Yeah, I think I think there's a real telepathy with dogs and their owners, and I think they get it. Mm hmm. Um. That's beautiful. Yeah. And that gives me hope. He's honoring me and my needs. He honors mother. And I'm trying I'm honoring him and meeting his needs too. I think it's great. It's, yeah. It gives me hope in this week of hopelessness. Mm -hmm. Um I watched again, I'm obsessed with English teacher. Mm-hmm. It's really funny. It's so good. Last night's episode spared no balls. It was great. Loved it. It's a great show. Yeah. I'm not fully caught up. I think I'm one episode behind, but. They're at like a teacher's convention, hijinks and so. Love that. Mm -hmm. um, Jessica Chastain is Just, at it again. If I said this yesterday on my Instagram, but really, I think the trend of celebrities complaining to airlines specifically, but just brands has really waned because I think celebrities have become savvy enough to know that like they're going to get made fun of when they like show their privilege like that. But one person carrying the torch is Jessica Chastain. And she 
has no shame and I fucking love her for it. And she's taking to social media to she's a beep tris. She's a, a she's, she's a warmonger and she loves to wage war against companies. And I do think that it's important for one actress. An Oscar of like, winning actress. An actress of like a very high caliber to continue <laughs> this fight. And I often wonder now that it's a trend because it's happened twice at least. DoorDash. Oh, DoorDash. Was there Uber? Or was it Uber Eats? Something, I think it was Uber Eats. Okay, Uber Eats, another airline. Was it JetBlue another time? I don't know. To my knowledge, it's only been this time and another time, but I don't I don't know the entire... It's, it's still... Both, someone needs to make a Wikipedia. I believe both these things happened this year, which is incredible. Yeah, so I pray that this becomes more regular and she can wage more battles. So she took to Twitter X yesterday, and I love her profile name, Jess Chastain. With a one S. And she said, thank you at JetBlue for your $15 credit. My flight was $1,500 and the credit is one one hundredth of the money I paid you. Strange that I paid you. <laughs> Strange that I paid you for your in-flight entertainment system that didn't work for the duration of my six hour flight. But I guess it was worth for just this $15 credit. Mute face. Incredible. Refund Jessica. Hello, Miss Jessica Chastain. And then, of course, some scared person at JetBlue was like, we're so sorry for this inconvenience. Please DM us and we can talk further. And she wrote, she tweeted, I already spoke to you. Wow. I love that. Um, she's waging war and she does not care. And I'm, I love that she's just telling us exactly how much she paid. Yeah, I, I don't love. want her to... I don't want her to really take on like huge companies. Like I don't want her to fight for like justice on behalf of other people. Like climate justice. I don't want. I just want her to fight on justice behalf on behalf of herself. No, with like JetBlue, Uber. It was amazing yesterday. As this like apocalyptic storm is like barreling down on the west coast of Florida, Jessica Chastain is like, she's like, I have some, I have a bone to pick. I couldn't watch. Um, Moneyball on my six hour flight to London, you know, and I paid 1500 and you gave me a travel credit of $15. This is not that right. is annoying. And she, if someone Drag loves them. film, it's Jessica Chastain. She's a lover of film. And when she's on a flight, she wants to sit in her JetBlue pod, her mint pod and like turn on JetBlue Entertainment. And there is her? nothing worse than an in-flight entertainment system not working or malfunctioning. Didn't you have that? Oh, no, you had... Oh, I had that. You had the leg rest was missing, right? No, but then they got me yeah. into a seat with a leg rest, but then the in-flight entertainment system every, 12, every 10 minutes would glitch, and I would have to rewind what I was watching and press play again. So Interval I did watching. that for the entirety of Under the Tuscan Sun. <laughs> And then I said, now I'm so exhausted, I just have to sleep. You went. I cried under the Tuscan sun. <laughs> I wept and said, why isn't this me? And then I wore myself out flat. from all the rewinding and then c cuddled up with Tony and laid flat. Well, Jessica, I imagine in her pod, doesn't lie flat. She sits up the entire time and just watches. 1500 though, might not be a lie flat. Really? Have you seen the price of first class and business at this hour? Oh. Girl, I recently bought an economy ticket <laughs> to go to Rome and I was like curious like I was like what the what's the biz situation like? Like is it like something I can do some points discount? A business flight round trip was $10,000. What? Yeah. <laughs> is it because it's the holidays? No, it's cuz every I'm telling you that Across the board, they're like minimum starting at like $3,400 or $4,000. Didn't have a, used to be like that. Do you have a possible upgrade for this flight? Zero, because I'm on Delta. I have no status and no respect. Uh, it's really, it's a, I'm nervous. I'll say it. I think I'm going to have to just almost overdose on Xanax to get through this flight. Are you flying direct? No, because I'm flying to Oklahoma City to drop Tony and at grandma's house and then flying to Atlanta, then flying to, Oof. it's hard. I, it it is going, it's not I will be going through from, a private hell. At least it's not a full flight from LA. There's breakups in between. 
Yeah, but it's still like a 10 hour flight yeah, from Georgia. Just trying to make it better. I under I appreciate that, but there <laughs> unfortunately like there is no making it better. I'm gonna be like this in a window seat, crunch mode. Are you in window? Well, I hope I actually didn't get to choose. It's a real Delta's cruel sometimes. Delta I'm a Delta girl now, and I'm really trying to rack up these points. I know. I I need to work on my you Delta gotta, status. You just got to commit. Because I've go. really committed to American Airlines, but they're not doing... Yeah, why aren't they... They're not, they don't do... They don't do a good route. They don't have a good route. Because you fly to, like, London and then to Rome? Yeah, but I, I don't like London, and I don't like Heathrow. Girl! Heathrow really... Heathrow's... They a scary airport. got on my shit list when they really fucked with me in the security line once. What'd they say again? This guy made me, like, he was pointing out my toiletries oh. in a really aggressive way and then said that I needed to put them all in a tiny plastic bag. And then I said, Do you have two one? can play this game. And I said, give me a plastic bag. And I put them and I was like, oh, and then kept like, un. I was like, <laughs> oh, like I can't. I was like, oh, let me try again. And like picked it. Oh and then God. I was like, Laura, I had to wage war. You went full. I went full psychological terror. And I was like, I'm traveling with a friend and he is a carry on. Can I put part of mine in his plastic bag too, since he hasn't filled Ryan? his? Uh, no, my friend Mike. And, oh, okay. and he was like, uh, okay, well, he, because uh, I found, because I found the workaround. I will always find the workaround. Don't fuck with me with my toiletries. A man should, they should bring a woman to they, comment on your toiletries, not a man. But I will, That's the I'll male wage gaze. a war on her. I don't give a fuck about your gender. <laughs> I will literally, you want to go to war? And I said, You want to okay. go to war with me? He made him run his thing through security again. Then he was like, oh, he has toiletries, so you can only... And then I said, I think I can do it. Just give me just give me some time, but I can do it. And then I kept Were you holding the line? Yeah. And, <laughs> and then I kept being like, Oh, it's almost and then I was like, No, I'll start over. And I did that three times. And I was like, I'm just gonna do this until he lets me go. Did he and let then, you go? Yeah, of course. He's were, not were people you're complaining. Not, no. Yeah. Because I was taken aside for like a special oh, you were, you were I was like, taken aside. So I went at I'm a do that true idiot's pace and then just pulled like that I'm too stupid to do this but I will get it eventually if you give me like 25 minutes I had all the time in the world I had the two hour layover I could have sat there and I would have sat there all day until I got my way it's on he went he went Christ mate crikey <laughs> he went she's at it bloody, again bloody hell this this bitch <laughs> I had to drive him to the brim and he make him give up. He like up. went to the pub that night and had a long. He might pint. have relapsed. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I'm telling you. So I avoid Heathrow for that reason specifically. Well, because you know you can fly from any city. Like if you just put your toilet. Does anyone even like put their toiletries in a plastic bag? Like the airline. Oh no. Yeah. I, like I, I just. You just put anything yeah. less than three ounces in like a toiletry yeah. case and you go about yeah, your yeah, yeah. life like any normal person. Right. Well, he throws the one place you're not allowed he to do He throws intense. That. He throws really intense. I mean, I, I you was- You can fly, sorry, but you can fly from anywhere else with your toiletries just as is, get through, but then you have to go through a separate thing at Heathrow. Heathrow's really like, Lon I mean, London and the city is very like, they're watching. Yeah, don't take it out on me. I was there after the Paris terrorist attack in 2015 yeah. for Thanksgiving, and they, the security to get to our gate, we had to go through security to get into our gate. Like, after going through security to get into the terminal. They love a security uh, check that there. That did not make me feel better. I was literally like, well, this makes me feel more scared to be on this plane. You know what I mean? Yeah, security doesn't went, make me feel safe whatsoever. I I mean, like uh, there's no version. I, it just makes me feel trolled. But then I also now, I mean, I have clear. I have TSA pre-check. Clear now. So you gotta get pre-checked. I know. Babe. Do you think Jessica Chastain is like, like all? She's like game for TSA. She's like it keeps me safe. She likes the pageantry of TSA. Mm -hmm. She probably doesn't do clear or pre-check. No, she loves, it keeps me grounded. She likes to take her shoes off. Why am I speaking in an Irish accent? She's <laughs> from like Seattle. It keeps me grounded. As a Juilliard girl, I know. 
Yeah, she probably goes through the whole thing. But couldn't you just fake everything and then just get clear and pre-check and then bomb the plane? Like, I don't understand how that makes it any different. Uh, uh, I uh, I posted about this and a friend sent me an old blind item from 2022 that I forgot about. And it, this it's related. This A-list movie... This A-list mostly movie actress who was a multiple Oscar winner slash nominee literally has two, maybe three friends. <laughs> if all of them are busy, our actress will literally just sit in her home and not do anything. Apparently, she just sits there and waits for someone to text or call her. She doesn't read or watch TV or doom scroll. She just sits there. Not Jessica Chastain. I'm <laughs> well, like, I was like, why is this me that I'm they're like, talking about? But I'm also like, so it is Jessica Chastain. <laughs> They Don't just make me cry. everyone in the entire world. Yeah, that's like me. Yeah. Blind item. Two, maybe three friends. If they don't, they, yeah, that's Who everyone's has more than three life. friends? Not Jessica Chastain. <laughs> that was so the. Jessica wrote that and sent it in. I know. So that, everyone remembers like a month ago when Blake Lively was being canceled. And part of the, it really began with a Scandinavian journalist named. <laughs> Kirsty Fla, whose name is spelled Kajersti, Kajersti, <laughs> she was the girl who interviewed for the si this sidewalk cafe thing, whatever the fuck, yeah. with Parker and Blake, and she was like bullied by Blake, and then she was interviewed by TMZ and was like, she's never apologized. It made me quit journalism. Everyone kind of felt bad for her. We were all like, oh, I kind of, you know, I get it. But now she's at it again with another viral bad apology uh, or a bad press junket moment with Anne Hathaway, Jessica Chastain's two-time co-star. Mm -hmm. And during the Les Mis press junket, Anne was rocking her pixie. She was, you know, probably about to start filming Interstellar soon. And she's doing the press junket and Jersey comes in and we'll watch the interview. So I was going to ask you to do the first question in singing. Can I sing it to you and you can sing back the answer? Well, I won't be doing that, but you're more than welcome to sing. Kirsti Fla from TV2 Norway. Do you feel that love was more passionate back then? Or people would sacrifice more for love than we do today? No. No? No. Do you remember your first crush? Um, no. You don't? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's not rude. She's just... No. She's just not fucking with you. She's answering. But I'm kind of like, now I'm like, this seems like a Jersey problem. And like, Jersey, if multiple people are being kind of like rude to you, then, or being a jerk to you, like, you might be part of that problem. Not to blame the woman, but like. Well, also, if it bothers you so much, then fucking quit. Or be better at journalism. Maybe ask better questions. Maybe have better vibes. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Jersey, you're coming to these press junkets, and maybe Anne Hathaway picked up on your vibes and didn't like it. Well, I'm picking up on her vibes of desperately wanting attention for think, people being mean to her, and I'm over that. I'm over it, too. This is a... Jersey is in dire need of attention, and Jersey is coming in, and Anne Hathaway's like, I have not eaten in, like, a year. i am just played Fantine. I'm like... She's like, probably, like, my tooth literally fell out while my, I was filming. I started smoking again. I... I'm harrowed. I'm harrowed. Everyone, Everyone hates, hates me. me. I'm about to win an Oscar and then get shamed for it and then go into hiding for two years. And you fucking asshole. You come in here and you say, I want you to sing for me. No, I'm not going to sing for you. I'm not going to sing for you. Well, I'm, I won't be doing that. I won't but be you doing can feel that. free to sing. Feel free to sing. She gave you the option. She's a polite woman. And she gave you the option. And then you ask a weird question. Were people more passionate back then? What the fuck are you talking about, Jerst? And Hathaway's like, no. Do people love more back then? No. How the fuck would I know? How the fuck would I know? This if, is a movie. I wasn't alive. 1700s, bitch. Yeah. I'm literally playing a part. I'm an actor. And then she goes, who's your first crush? You think Anne Hathaway? Who the fuck? What? Why are you asking her that? Would you ask a guy that? Fair. Just? Jersey is power hungry. I Jersey? think she has a real kink for getting one over on these women, these women. And I just am like. I was on Jersey's side for the Blake interview. I thought Blake was a little rude to her, but. Blake was rude. But I mean, maybe... Anne Hathaway was curt. But like, who cares? This is also 
12 years, 12 ago? years ago. Well, so Jer- Kirsty said that Anne emailed her, mm-hmm. and I think Anne was like, I don't want to get this. This girl's going to cancel me. Like, I need to get on it. Anne's, Anne's publicists literally shit themselves while they were cleaning up the sopping shit that had soaked through their pants and on the floor. They frantically called Anne's people and they were like, This can't happen to you. You've got to send an email. So Anne r- wrote a long email explaining that she was going through something at that time and was very sorry and she was rude and she deeply apologized and invited Jersey to come interview her on her next film that comes out in 2025. And Jersey was like, I won't be revealing what she told me. We decided as two people to not share what she was going through at the time. I'm like, I bet you wish you could share that. Oh, she would love nothing more. And she got what she wanted because now Anne's like, Inviting her and she's gonna get to be around a Well, I also person. was like, I love it's a really smart move on Anne's part to be like, but you can interview for me for my next movie. Yeah. Because people will watch that. And it's also like stay in your lane. But I'm like, you know, don't come for Anne because she's already been through a fuck enough. Yeah. And I won't stand for it. She's That's a treasure. That's all I have to say. She's a treasure. And you know what? She was drinking her water. She's probably having a long ass day. She's like, my ex-husband scammed the Pope. My ex-boyfriend scammed the Pope. I was dragged into that shit. And now everyone's mad at me because I'm a theater kid and I'm kind of a nerd and kind of annoying. But I'm also a generational talent. Mm -hmm. And I'm also so hungry. You have no fucking idea how hungry I am. And you have the gall to come in here and tell me to sing? Fuck you. Fuck you, Justy. She's literally, fuck you, lady. You come in here. You tell me these things. I buy man medicine. You judge me. And fuck you. Don't call me lady. Suck my dick. That yeah. was Anne Hathaway. Mm-hmm. What if that was the email she sent? I would love it. But maybe now I'm like, was there other context that we didn't see to the Blake interview? Did Kirstie like give off some bad vibes? Probably. And Blake was like. She's like annoying. I mean, she I'm might not, just be one of those annoying people that you're Blake's like, really as soon as too. you're in front of her, you're like, God damn it. Yeah, maybe she's an energy vampire. You might just, she might just be the kind of person you want to be a bitch to. Yeah. Some people are like that. And she was doing sort of like, oh, no, okay. Victim mentality. <laughs> Get a grip. Be anyway, powerful. Be powerful. Which be your like whole Anne. story is like, mm, these girls are mean to me. Like, get a... Get over it. You don't think that, you don't think Anne Hathaway girls have been mean to Anne Hathaway? Girls have been mean to literally everyone. Everyone has a moment where someone was rude to them. It's lit, it's life, especially in work scenarios. So like, should have got off the pot. Yeah. If you want to be a journalist, you Tattle, get in there. It's tattletale energy. Yeah. I don't like it at all. <laughs> I don't like it either. It's real Narc, like teacher's pet. Could you see? Yeah. You're on my list. The Met Gala theme has been revealed. Met Gala theme was seen. I feel like the Met Gala theme is always, like, how far out now are they revealing it? They have to do an early reveal to get people excited. Okay. Um. So Vogue has announced that the co-chairs this year are Lewis Hamilton, ASAP Rocky, and Pharrell Williams. Okay, good. Those are all good. Um. I think LeBron James, also a co-chair. Great. The Costume Institute Spring 2014. 20- 25 exhibition super fine tailoring black style which is inspired by monica l miller's 2009 book slaves to fashion black dandyism and the styling of black diasporic identity i'm into this i mean i think it's a great style and like i'm i'm ready to see it but i'm just worried about really you're worried no i'm just worried that people are gonna take liberties i mean I th- I think it's going to be I think it's be, I I love it. I'm just saying I'm talking about like I know but like people probably will, but that's yeah. like kind of part of the whole jig now. Fans are con- fashion fans are concerned. Well, fashion fans, it's like randos. Yeah. <laughs> randos online are concerned. Randos that are will never find themselves within a hundred feet of any Met Gala ever are concerned. I love dandyism in general, so I'm I don't I'm even really know what dandyism is. It's kind of like a bow tie. Uh, it's like a vest and a cane. Yeah. It's like, Mr. Peanut. A little bit. A little and just sort of like a chain, a pocket watch. Dandyism is like a it's a, a lifestyle. Let's get a dandy. 
dandyism. Gay dandies are a thing. Like Oscar Wilde? Dadaism. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's like, yeah. Yeah. That is chic. I love it. It's kind of jazzy. Pharrell kind of dresses like that. Pharrell normally. does do that. Remember uh, Farnsworth Bentley? Diddy's? Mm -hmm. Yes. Wasn't he Diddy's like right hand man? I don't know. Let's get eyes on him. I mean, this is really cool. This is cool. I think that, you know, who's excited about this? Blake Lively. This is her oh, true chance to go full mixed peanut. Do you think she'll go? When has she not gone? Well, she didn't go last year. Well, now it's time to come back. But she's been... This is like a... a Jersey canceled her, so she can't do dandy. A chant... Blake's cursing the heavens because Jersey made it. No, Blake will she be went, back. Peanuts! This is cool. Zendaya I think it's going to be kill. great and exciting. Oh my God, Coleman Domingo is one of the chairs. Yeah. Ugh. It's a bunch of really sexy chairs and finally like Some... a good theme that's not like shiver me timbers or something <laughs> that's not time capers time capers are like flower on the wall like this is like a real shiver me timbers. yeah this, this is a real thing it's it's cool and it's like thought out and like has good not since the catholic theme have we had a true when, did, when was catholic again it was like ages ago it was pre-camp which was a absolute a flop could have been great could have been incredible flopped hard i think this is gonna be great yeah it'll just be it, it's i'm just curious to see how some like gen z people interpret it me too someone was like let's pray no one shows up in blackface i don't think anyone's gonna I don't do think that. someone's gonna do that i think they're gonna have good you know people contributing and like advising and i think It'll be it's okay. a corporate affair. Yeah. It's an affair for corporations. This is the mostly. first time I've been excited in it, about it for a while. Me too. I'm po I'm channeling positivity. Oh, Tiana Taylor. Let's talk about the true dandies. The queens of Milwaukee. <laughs> I like, okay, I'm Carrie. I'm Lara. And you're listening to Sexy, Sexy Unique, Unique Podcast. Podcast. Salty, Salty Utah, Utah dandies. Queens. I like never want them to leave Milwaukee, and I th I think they should just live there. Same. I'm like I feel weirdly like I want to go to Milwaukee now. It did its job. It they yeah. The Milwaukee Tourism Board's huge investment into me a over. Bravo franchise has won. I do crave beer and cheese. I crave a non-alcoholic Miller Light and like cheddar. And crackers. And sausage. In a cold cave. And like some beer bro like pretzels. shoving it in my mouth. I want a pretzel. Yeah. I, I just felt weirdly comforted by the city. And I... I like, Maybe you're going to move there someday. Um, I don't think I'm going to move there. but <laughs> Maybe you and Simon are going to find a whole new life in Milwaukee. Gay Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe you'll queer this space. Well, it seems like it's already very queer. Well, maybe you'll add to the... The flavor? Queer flavor. Okay. We open with a little Laverne and Shirley moment. Um, Normally I would hate this, but I actually liked it. Yeah, it was cute. Then everyone wakes up. I did love that Lisa Barlow got an also starring. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone wakes up to just seize the day. And we get a little bit of footage of everyone's like morning routine and Lisa Barlow is with her glam squad getting her hair and makeup done. And she's acting truly so demure to them. Her Lisa? demure behavior <laughs> in mean? front of like her glam squad. Like it was like she was being so overly nice and like polite. Like she's sitting like this. Why do you think? And she goes, because I think she wants people to think that she's really kind to like her help. Mm hmm. Which she's probably... Which she's probably regular, but like... Ambivalent. Blunt, or like not... You know what I mean? Like I want... I think she wants people to think that she has like a really good vibe with the glam squad. Mm -hmm. She knows what the people like. But she was like, oh, um, well, yesterday we went to the Bucks game. And one of the girls is like, what are the Bucks? And she goes, ah, the Bucks? <laughs> oh, you don't know what the Bucks are? I was just like... 
girl, I see you right now. She really wants to be like, don't talk to me. Yeah, do my makeup. Give me a bronze look. Do my makeup. Get me a Diet Coke. Morning at the Kin. This Scandinavian ass hotel. And Whitney. Whitney's going and she's like wee willy winkying around the floor. And she goes into Mary's room. Which I was like, I just can't believe they're friends now. I know. And Mary's straightening her hair and Whitney goes, what is that? She goes, it's a straightening comb. It's for black girls. And Mary and Whitney goes, oh, okay. She goes, I love that purple on you. And then Mary goes, lilac, right? And Whitney goes, yes, lilac. They're getting along. Mary is really... Mary is Mary's here MVP to play of this ball. Trip. Yeah. She is. She's a good attitude. Whatever cocktail she's on and whatever like therapy or just not being near her grandfather has like done to her, I love it. I'm continually surprised at what she's, she's able to bring to the table this season. She tickles me. Whitney goes, I've jam packed the last day with everything Milwaukee has to offer. First, we are taking a bus over to the Beater Caves where Miller is born and bred. Then we are going to Harley for the Harley Davidson restaurant. And then we are topping it off at Trixie's Gay Bar. This is it. Which sounds like a sitcom. (laughs) I'm it. (laughs) Meredith comes to Lisa's room to tell her that the night before... Whitney and Henji warned her about Lisa. She tattles. And Henji asked Mare if she fully feels like she can trust Lisa now. And Meredith in a confessional, she goes, Lisa and I have worked very hard. And, you know, honestly, Lisa hasn't done anything recently. So I'm kind of just like giving her the benefit of the doubt. So she basically tells Lisa, I got your back because you haven't been a bitch to me in like a year. Mm-hmm. And Lisa's very offended. And also, I'm gonna like stir the pot. This kind of was like a non episode episode. Mm-hmm. It was like we're just talking about like, well, I guess the Alibaba of it all was like a big deal. And Henji's breakdown. Henji's chair. The chair was her WWE big. moment. <laughs> <laughs> Whitney goes into cousin Heather's room, and Heather goes here. And they, she gives her Laverne and Shirley cardigans with Whitney, W, and H. Mm-hmm. And she goes, I'm Laverne, and you're Shirley. I go, of course you're Laverne. <laughs> Is Laverne hotter? Or? No, just like the first name. Oh, okay. Very yeah, Heather. Heather and Whitney. Mm-hmm. Not Whitney and Heather. No. Um, and, then, and then she goes, she, <laughs> she holds the shirt upside down, and she goes, look, the W becomes an M for Milwaukee. <laughs> it's like, girl, you are getting your check for this. What if Milwaukee paid Whitney like five million dollars to come and just like shill? And she spent and she gave it all to the IRS or whoever mm-hmm. <laughs> the SEC. She gave it all to Alibaba SEC, to buy more yeah. jewelry to yeah. restock. <laughs> Heather's very concerned about Whitney's business and she thinks that she needs to talk to her like later on in the day to tell her the rumors and the nastiness about Alibaba jewelry. Whitney then checks on Barlow, who's still in glam, and Lisa's decided to take the like cold shoulder route. And she goes, are you ex- so excited to go to Miller Museum? And Lisa goes, I think I'm going to do something else, actually. Uh, okay, I'm going to pass. And Whitney goes, that's crazy because we came here together. What are you going to do? And Lisa goes, I have some ideas. And then she goes, but we'll meet later for dinner. And then Whitney goes, okay. And then she leaves. And then you see Whitney look at her glam and go, (laughs) or Lisa, sorry. Yeah, she's back to being demure. Who me? me? I'm silly, but I'm sweet. She says to them. How wild was that? Am I sweet? Am I sweet? Tell me. I'm sweet, right? (laughs) Um, I like, I wish that Lisa had just been like vague about her ideas and like that she'd gone off on a day of absolute mystery with Maylee and Brittany, and we never knew what they got up to. This trio is beyond random. It's th- truly the most random thing. Do you think Bravo paid Lisa an to extra it- 5K to... Integrate Melee? Melee kind of... I'm like, loyal friend you are. Judas. Yeah. Judas! Judas! <laughs> Lisa invites... <laughs> She literally, the first people she sees are Brittany and Melee, and she's like, do you guys want to go curling with me? And they're like, sure. 
And Amelia goes, oh, I guess Whitney might be upset, but <laughs> whatever. I'm like, Ugh, backstabber. Yeah. Don't trust she her. She brought you on the show. Mm-hmm. And this is how you repay her? Going to curl with a woman who accused you of getting close to being banned from Nordstrom because yeah. you return all your clothes. I know what this is. Maylee wants... At least his approval. I know. It's like the more someone is horrible to you, the more you want them to love you. But in moments like this, you have to stay true to your friends. And you have to say, I would love to go curling, but I have another commitment. And It's Miller time, baby. I'm going to go to the Miller cave, but... I would love to go curling or on another excursion with you some other time. Because literally Lisa would have been like, okay, whatever. Sure, that's fine. <laughs> um, the they get on the bus to go to the Miller and Whitney goes, where is Lisa, Mele, and Brittany? And then um, she's told that Lisa is like pissed about Henji and her telling Meredith about to not trust her. And then Whitney goes, oh, it now makes sense why Lisa is not here. She goes, did you tell Lisa about what we said to Meredith? Full detective mode. Meredith goes, yes, I did. <laughs> oh, it now makes so much sense why they're not here on this bus. <laughs> Lisa takes the gals curling. It was a curling outing. Um, the other ladies go to the beer caves and... The Milwaukee Tourism Board and Miller, I think, said you each get well, 25K. First, first, at the at the ice rink, they have, like, the curling coach of America, like, there to meet them. And then Lisa goes, our friends are doing something else, but I don't want to be around them. And he goes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, Melee's like, I'm used to being on the ice because I was training for the Junior Olympics when I decided to walk away. And I want to make this clear. As someone who went to Junior Olympics as a swimmer, it's not that big of a deal. It's just like for kids, Yeah, right? it's like, it's. I mean, it's like when you're a kid, it's like kind of a big meet. But like, I've heard Bravo stars be like, I was, I went to the Junior Olympics. And I'm always like, okay, like everyone did. Melee. I feel like 10. if you're pretty good, you get to go to the Junior Olympics. It's, yeah, it's literally like, I'm, and now I sound like a bitch, but I'm like. No, it's pre. It's real. And I'm just like, I'm tired of this ruse that the Junior Olympics is like a big deal. And I see it mentioned all the time in reality shows. Shut up. What's a big deal that would be actually like brag worthy? Like nationals. Junior nationals. Nationals are bigger like than Like my sister went Olympics. to like senior nationals. Okay. Which is like. That was one like. One below Olympic trials. Okay, I see. When, when you're Why in high school. Are Junior Olympics related to the Olympics or they just no, are saying that? They're just saying that. Fraudulent behavior. It's fraudulent. So like, I'm saying this is someone who's like, and I've known, I've Fellow always known. Fellow Junior Olympian. You, I've never used a J-O line. And it's called J-O's, Until now. which kills me. <laughs> J-O? Yeah. Many J-O's You go to J-O's, it goes... JOs, zones, sectionals, junior nationals, senior nationals, Olympic trials, Olympics. Wait, JOs are truly the lowest literally, of the damn low. Literally, JOs in middle Atlantic swimming is like you could fart sports. your way into the junior Olympics. You could literally go <sighs> and push yourself down the pool, going <sighs> and moving you get at a to glacial pace, and you would probably go to JOs. So it's a lie. And truther. I'm, I'm a truther. I'm here to bust. J.O.'s exposed. The J.O. <laughs> industrial. Big J.O. is not coming for me. J.O.'s is a fucking ruse. And anyone who says I was in Junior Olympics, you're not that great. Tell them. Because I was one of them. That part. That part. And I've I've known better, though. I've never used the line. I went J.O.'s. Don't ever. How embarrassing. How embarrassing for you, Melee. But Melee does you. do a good curl push. Okay, yeah. I was like, okay. I, she seemed comfortable on the ice. I noted that. She seemed comfortable. It's that J.O. energy. I know. The other ladies go to the beer caves. and God, being J.O., being the younger sibling of someone who's really good at a sport that you also do, mm -hmm. it's hard. Oh, because Taryn really Taryn was, a, Taryn was an All-American. Damn. She was best in the I state. I never knew that. Her relay was the best in New Jersey. Karen was, she went to Columbia to swim. Another betrayal. Betrayal. <laughs> Damn. I mean, I was I good. I didn't realize. I was good. I always thought that you were the good one. I was really good when I was younger, but I plateaued. Mm. Taryn just 
used it, got in college, she went hard. did one year and said, I'm done. Which I was like, that's smart. Yeah. Get into an Ivy League school and then be like, mm -hmm. she's like, I'm not going to the Olympics. Bye. No. But Melee, I see you. You're wrong. The truth is out there now. <laughs> Sorry. So my theory is that Miller paid okay. these <laughs> you, ladies. You have so much conspiracy. I have a lot of conspiracy in this episode. Miller said 25K to the one who really sells the caves on being the most incredible thing they've ever seen. And Meredith said, I'm going to throw my hat in the ring. She goes, oh, wow. Look at this. She goes, this is amazing. She's like, Meredith like takes her palm and rubs it on the side of the wall and goes, it's interesting to imagine how much time has passed through these stones. So much beer has been stored here. They sit down for the tasting and Mary is convinced to take her first sip of Miller High Life, the champagne of beers. And I think she really thinks it's like, Good. Yeah. Mary has never had beer before. And we even see that she's making jokes in this moment with the beer man. He goes, well, have you heard that Miller's the champagne of beers? And she goes, really? What year is it? <laughs> and I was like, Mary? She's so Cosby, charming. You better stop. And she takes a sip and she goes, I like it. Shout out to Miller High Life. That was my beer of choice growing up. As uh, OKC, we would go to the bar. I'd get a Miller High Life and a mint schnapps oh. and go head to head. Girl. It was called a, what was it called? <laughs> Just blackout. Blackout. <laughs> That was like a, I think a Not lunch box at, uh, <laughs> at one of the bars that I went to. Mm. I used to kind of paired well. Yeah, I guess I would do like beer and a shot of whiskey. So insane! You couldn't pay me now. Do whiskey to drink brown liquor. Pickleback. I know. Um, Mary, I'm touched. I know, like she's a gorgeous she's problematic. Lady. Who cares? But I don't give a fuck. I don't ever. I've never Sorry. cared once. Never will care. She can do whatever she wants. I don't give a shit. I love her. I love her and I'm so here much. For, what a life this woman has lived. I hope this leads to a book. She seems genuinely happy to be with these women, too. I know. Did she get, like, electroshock therapy? I don't know. What? I need to know, like, what this, like, what happened. She had a full mindset shift. She's out here doing... She did you know, so many adults like can't get to the place that Mary Cosby is now where like her entire mindset around this has shifted She's in the moment. I she really she, is like did she do like ayahuasca. Did I she go to like know. Brazil? And, did like, God like reveal himself? Was Jesus seen with her? Because like did God tell her like girl you gotta, you gotta lighten up a little you're on the show like just grab have the fun. bull by the horns and have fun. Maybe. Damn bitch. And she was like you know what? You're right. I don't know what's going on. It might be a ruse. I don't care. I love it. I like it. Brittany at the curling reveals she's received a novel sized text from Jared Osmond terrorizing her. And he starts out by going, wow, just got my head bit off, Brit. And then later he goes, you have terminated this friendship with your actions. So he's confirming that they're not in a relationship, which is what she zeroes in on the word friendship. She was like flipping out the night before about the brow girl and him having like flirty DMs. And you hear Lisa in the background. She goes, he's like a D-list Osman. Who cares? And I was like, I'm with you, girl. Set this bitch straight. Brittany's like, I feel so betrayed. I feel so. And then Mele goes, this is treasonous. And Lisa goes, it's treason. And I went, that's the right word for it, treason. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> that's not what treason is. That's the right word. Okay. He's calling you a friend, not his love. Lisa's, I want her relationship advice. I would love to have Lisa, like, in a moment where I'm, like, worried about what someone thinks of me, like, take my phone and text something wild and, like, cunty like what she did with Brittany mm -hmm. that would be nice yeah we all need that moment in a while we need like words of encouragement from Lisa the beer man says 
come with me if you want to hear a ghost story. About the caves. I was like... I love also, I mean, I'm sure, like, other countries have beer caves, but I just love that, like, America's lore is, like, like you can go in, like, a catacomb and see, like, skulls from millions and, or not millions, millions. but, like, hundreds of years, hundreds ago. Of years ago, like, thousands of skulls. Hey, don't lick. And in America, they're like, come see where the beer was made. I know. It's Come see where we stored the beer before the fridge. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Here I am. Wow. They go up to these like random bartenders who look terrified to be on TV. All, all these Milwaukee people, they've never seen a camera in their life. They've never. It's really their first rodeo on camera, and they are quite nervous. And then out of nowhere, Mary goes, my dad was neighbors with Jeffrey Dahmer, and... He was driving to work one day and he went by the apartment and he saw lots of body bags of body parts being taken out of the apartment. And that was pretty crazy. She goes, he, he didn't realize they were body parts. So and they, they were, were cooked. They were cooked. And then the, the bartenders are terrified. They're gagged. And positively she goes, silent. She goes, my dad lied a lot about a lot of things, so I hope this isn't a lie. You never know. And then Heather and Whitney are back at the table and Whitney, go, Whitney goes, have you tried the jam on the hard cheese? It's so good. They're like faking it till they make it. Cousin vibes. And Heather then is like, <clears throat> and brings up the Alibaba gate. Whitney goes, there is an Instagram account out there accusing me of buying my jewelry from Alibaba. I was like, well. Fix it. Did you? And she goes, I don't understand this. I don't see Heather going to the bottom of the sea for her caviar. I, I was like, Whitney did not deny that she's been <laughs> buying from Alibaba. Wait, then I was imagining, you know, there's like pearl divers. There's like mm -hmm. old women who can hold their breath. Like I was imagining Meredith doing that. Is caviar at the bottom of the sea no. anyways? It's I'm, like you catch a fish, yeah. right? And like cut it open or just squeeze it and its eggs comes out. I don't know. Yeah, Whitney doesn't, dis she doesn't beat the allegations. No, she doesn't, like, say firmly, like, no. She goes, it's called commerce. You buy things and then you sell them. Did she not learn her lesson after last year? Stay out of DMs. Stay out of documents. <laughs> stay out of documents. And Heather goes, I beg of you, please don't bring this up in the Sprinter van. I love specifically the Sprinter van because these girls, shit goes down on the Sprinter van. The ladies head back to the hotel and Whitney FaceTimes Maylee in kind of a passive aggressive manner. Whitney's chugging beer. She's taking a roadie. Yeah, and she's kind of like, would have been nice to hear from you that you weren't coming, but all right. And I'm like, not no. Not no. Um, everyone gets ready for dinner and then they do a quick turnaround back in the van to get to the Harley Davidson Museum. And Whitney goes, it has been an amazing trip until I found out y'all are talking about my business. And she goes, who among you started this rumor? And then out of nowhere, Meredith goes, I don't think anyone started this rumor. I saw this information online, Whitney, and told Heather myself. It has been brought to my attention that people are saying I buy my jewelry from <laughs> Alibaba. <laughs> Meredith you came under fire on social media. Okay. And then they argue like back and forth. And then Whitney goes, now we must go because this is a really important museum. Whitney is like, I didn't realize this is it, she and Justin are like Harley heads. Like they are the hell's angels of their Mormon development. I wrote that they are Hell's Angels as well. They are fully like leather clad couple on the road. They're obsessed with Harleys. I Whitney. was at first like lolling to myself about the Harley Davidson Museum being a really important museum. But then turns out it actually is. It looks really cool and I would love to go there. They get there and they meet the guy that runs it and He's like a famous motorcyclist and Whitney immediately knew who he was and she goes, I just have to bow down. And I was like, whoa, this is a culture. She's starstruck. Mm -hmm. They're going to like Sturgis. They're going doing like big rides, like Harley rallies and stuff. 
I know. My dad had a moment. My dad had a moment too. I think a lot of it's a real like millennial dads. Ha- if your dad didn't have a Harley moment, I don't know. <laughs> he wasn't a middle class, upper middle class, I guess. But it's a real, it's a real, it's a real midlife upper crisis. mid midlife crisis. A man turns to a a big hog. That my dad will, grew a beard. He was seven years that's into cool. bed. He went like full David Letterman. He fully like had a beard and it was freakish. And How long? Do you have a picture of his beard? No, but it was, he like, he was in a moment. He was having a just exploratory moment. Him, he had a group of dads that all wore leather and took to the roads together of South, around South Jersey. That's nice. And they would pick him up. They would like, you'd hear... <laughs> and we'd, I'd look out the curtains and dad would be going out. <laughs> oh. My dad had a Harley when I got back from boarding school and it had a sidecar and I would sit in the sidecar and let him take me to my grandma's nursing home. I didn't, we didn't have a sidecar. He took me on it once. He took me on it twice and one time I was crying and the second time was fun. <laughs> I always liked them because the Harleys are pretty big, so they don't feel as like scary as go. I've been on some small motorcycles as like a backseat motorcycle bitch, but like the sidecar was a vibe. I I would have liked. I would have liked going. I I think the sidecar would have been more my speed. Being on the back is scary, and I don't like it. A sidecar to and from the nursing home to visit your dying grandma on hospice can't recommend enough. Remember in Mad Max, like in the second, the original second one, when um, there's like that horrible villain on the motorcycle and he has like a twink lover on the back. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Like an androgynous. No, okay, but no. I like it. That's me. That's Whitney and Justin. <laughs> <laughs> um, they sit down for dinner. And Whitney confronts Meredith. And I'm like, you're not Meredith. Can't say sorry. So she'll, she's never going to apologize for anything. So no. what are you expecting from her? Also, like, do you buy your jewelry yeah. from Alibaba or not? It's a valid question, Whitney. Lisa jumps to Meredith's defense. There and one again. starts arguing with Whitney. And Whitney goes, I do not need you to talk for her. I am talking to Meredith. Let's keep it between her and I, just her and me having a conversation. And Lisa goes, oh my gosh, am I going to do that? Should I start talking like you? And I was like, Miss Demure not has Demure taken anymore. her top off. She is She's uncrossed those legs yeah. and the claws are out. Speaking of tits, I thought Henji was wearing a drag queen breastplate. I literally Henji's was like. breasts. I, I was. I didn't know they were, I thought, didn't you kind of think they were like fake at first? I was like. I think they are fake, but not No, but I thought they fake. were like, I thought she was doing like a drag thing. They were contoured and highlighted and perked up. Hard as rock. They were right in your, they were bazungas. Henji starts getting into it too. Henji, this strikes me as being really fake. Like, to me, it seems like Henji saw what Lisa did at the Bezos party and said, where's my Bezos moment? So Henji just um, immediately when Lisa and Henji start going at it, Henji just out of nowhere goes. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's kind so of a quiet. half-hearted push. No, I'm like, if you're going to commit, you have to go Judai style. I know, but I was like, you can't. She decided to do it. Here's what I think her thought process was. Her thought process was, I need to have my moment. Lisa threw a glass and it was explosive and <laughs> I'm going to do that here and now. And then she stood up and was like making the motion, but inside her mind was like, this isn't right. Fuck, I'm at a museum. Like that's actually really disrespectful to like trash something in this museum. It's not a party that I like paid for. It's not like rented catering. It's like I'm in the middle of a museum so now, but I've already committed, so I have to see this through, but I'm just going to like lightly push the chair down. Henji's, Henji's genuinely mindful and demure, and I think this moment she was fully like, this isn't me. And I saw it and I related to it. She realized like as her arm was moving and then she transferred the push to just like a light push. <laughs> and, and even then, she was kind of terrified at like what hell she had 
rot. And then Lisa goes, oh, what are you going to do now? You're going to storm out and be like, I have to call Electra. And I go, oh, and then and you just hear, I think, Melee, someone goes. No, Brandy, or no, Brittany. Brittany. She goes, let's not bring the children into this. Go call Electra. Isn't that what you do? And then Ange- Henji's face. You don't bring up Electra to Henji. No. She went. You see, you also see as soon as Henji lightly pushes her chair to the ground and she's standing there, everyone's kind of like shell shocked. Everyone's like, what the fuck? You just see Maylee like scurry over behind her and like pick it up and put it back. Maylee knew you can't do that in a museum. Mm -hmm. And then it settles down and then you hear ding, 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 ding. And then Brittany goes, I'd like to raise the glass. Mary goes, Mary goes, come on, don't do this. She goes. I, it it is very emotional in here, but and you do love each other, and no one responds, and then drunk Brittany. Brittany goes, I have an announcement. Ding ding ding, and you just see Mary look at uh, Brittany, and she goes, oh. "It's like this bitch again." Ding ding ding. She goes, "I just wanted to announce that Jared and I have officially broken up," and everyone goes, "Good." And she goes, yeah, it's just I had this epiphany. Like, I needed to end things with him. And then we get, like, a super cut of her telling anyone with two ears about her epiphanies about Jared. And then he- then Heather chimes in. Someone was like, why are you with him for so long and, like, let him treat you like this? And Heather goes, he's an Osmond. And, and then Bronwyn goes, so are you in love with... Jared, or are you in love with Osmond? And then that Ooh. Brittany looks into Bronwyn's eyes and goes, newcomer to newcomer, I'm going to wage war against you. She goes, I think you should worry about your own marriage, Bronwyn. And she goes, your husband, what's his name? And then Bronwyn goes, you don't even know my husband's name. Why yeah. are you? And she goes, well, I want to know is, do you love him? When did you guys meet? And she starts like kind of going in full like, I love, worry about your own marriage. What's your husband's what's, what's name? What's your husband's name? <laughs> Bronwyn says that she's in a stunningly gorgeous relationship built on love and physical attraction and laughter. And that is why she doesn't have a prenup with her husband. She goes, tell me about how you met, though. The first time you met, did you think your husband was, were you attracted to your husband? And then Bronwyn goes, she does this thing where she's like, were you attracted to him or were you attracted to his money? And then Bronwyn goes... When I met my husband, I was pulling in like a lot of money with my finance job. And she like winks. And I was like, oh. Shut her the hell up. Yeah. And then they all start talking about prenups and postnups and lack thereof. Meredith is really. Shaken. I love to see where people draw the line about like what is okay conversation to have and what's not. And where Meredith draws the line is at prenups. Well, Meredith, Just, we do not I do not think that's appropriate to talk about. So personal. This is the words of a generationally wealthy woman whose father was rich. The personal that prenups are personal. Yeah, because Meredith is like from a incredibly rich family and oh. her dad was like a big developer. OK, so she's like, I think she's in a place of prenups are personal. She's in a place of. I need to post up because my I'm the one with all the money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not Seth. I said, good for you, Bronwyn. To me, this is all very personal information. When she winked, though, I got the chills. That freaked me out. Yeah, I would I, never want to get that wink. No. I also, like, if you're going to try and turn the table on someone else, you better Come have prepared. your ducks in a row and I'm not trying to make an indictment on Brittany's intelligence but I, I don't am. think I don't think she's as smart as Braun one no <laughs> so I don't think I think you're kind of picking a fight with like a bulldog I don't think you get entangled with like Jared Osmond for years if you're right but maybe actually some of us some people do get entangled with an Osmond <laughs> I just am also so unclear on what the Osmonds are bringing to the table. They're Mormon royalty. Fame wise. It's just, it's, it's a just, different they culture. are the ones. Lisa also really like genuinely like wants Brittany to not give her power away to a man. Lisa's a feminist. <laughs> In her own weird way. She, she is. is actually like a radical feminist. Mm-hmm. 
She's like, it's the Mormon culture. They teach women have to be subservient. She needs to break that cycle. Lisa is a cool Mormon. I would love to talk to her specifically about Mormonism because she's doing it in a way that it seems not a lot of people are. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, how traditional are you really? Yeah. So then they're like, Whitney goes, it is now time to go to This Is It, to Lixie McTale's drag bar. So everyone gets ready to go and we will hop on the Sprinter van. And Bronwyn appears wearing a Moschino hot dog couture. I liked that. Mary calls it a costume. I didn't like that. Um, Whitney comes out in like a sequin little ditty. And like Devil fringe sequin boots. Yeah. She's gone a bit boop in this moment. She gets on the bus and she goes, who is ready for a gay bar? And then they all go, woo! And I was like, hell yes. They needed this Helen moment because nothing helps women in their situation like going to a place full of gays that are obsessed with them. Whitney explains she's had a lifelong fascination with drag and drag culture. Since she was a young girl. Diane Warren took her to Palm Springs as a little girl and she saw a queen walking by her on the street and she was in awe. And from then on, she's like been fascinated and fixated on drag queens. I love that. I love, I think she's a drag king. Can a drag king just dress like in exaggerated femme drag? I think that's also just drag. Because there's like cis women who do drag. That just go even more yeah. femme. But I, I, I feel like she would, I can see Whitney in like a... A little mustache. Kind of dandy. Diane Warren, what's he doing in Palm Springs? Cutting some hair. <laughs> They get to the bar and Trixie's waiting in the line. Trixie just, every time she's on screen, I... I think it was a Trixie impersonator. Oh. It wasn't Trixie, it was an impersonator. That's wild. Isn't that crazy? So they cut the line, they get on stage, and they perform. They each do a performance. They go... Henji's performance shocked me, because it was really... It was a bit mid. She was timid. Mary gets she's up. She's still... You know what? She's her shaking. inner monologue she's embarrassed. is like running itself about the chair. She's so mortified. She's really mortified because she didn't commit to the chair bit and she just like half heartedly pushed a chair over. And she's like, How, if I can't commit to that, how can I commit to in front to of these, this crowd of gay men? How can I commit to my drag persona, Electra? She goes, A true Greek, a true Greek queen would have thrown that chair across the room and gone, Hopa. And, I, and she's like, am I not Greek enough? I know. She's having like a full identity crisis because of Chairgate. Mary is so, she gets up and, they, and the entire crowd goes, Mary, Mary. And she just like goes up and she commits and she's just a trip. I love her. I was surprised to see her so at home in a gay bar. I mean, I'm not surprised because, she, but she was, she seemed a little like about it earlier. But that's like true gay icon behavior. No, the the truest gay icon is a reluctant gay icon. Mm -hmm. But she's just, she felt at home here. Is Mary still running that church? I don't know. Did, did they go underground? I don't know. They shuddered. Maybe she just was like, I'm out and you can have it, but also pay me millions of dollars. And her husband was like, fine. I want all my real estate. I mean, if she's God, she could do whatever she wanted. I feel like decades of thinking you're God can't go away in an instant. So there's probably still a part of her that's like. <laughs> Maybe she, God didn't appear to her, but she looked in the mirror and said, you're God. Have a good attitude on this show. Something, whatever's working, she... She boots the house down. I love to see it. This is it. This is really it. Back to Milwaukee or back to Salt Lake City they go. One of the dolls. Teddy the Schnauzer and Tony and Mango's cult. Alex Delisle. Makeup Fresh. Obviously. Emily Vaughn. Gina Sapienza. Sarah Elizabeth from Lu Boston. Lucy from London. Brooke Johansson. Lilia Farrell. Gerd Queen of Brooklyn. Brittany Date Night Wise. Dilly from The Beaver Picture. Jessica Hernandez. Malzadov Lals. Mary. Katie Stolen. Mike Earhart. Sharon Baum. Realtor. Timothy Shield. Matthew Thomas. Owsley Robinson. Cheeseburger Bay. Kathy West. Kit Moore. Hillary from Chicago. Orlanda. 
Patron of the Farts. David from Switzerland. Nick Sedaris. Mr. Brandon. Emily. Kim Lucas. Drew from Toronto. Katie the Sup Lawyer. RJ. Modern Counseling McLean, Virginia. Jeffrey Pradama Pradama Pradama. Love you dolls. Bye. 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 